everyone. Welcome to the Narrow Path Live and in Color. And uh, as I always say, I'm matching Jesus today. Gosh, I wish I matched him in every way, but uh, we definitely have the same shirt on. So that's that's close. His grace is enough. It's grace enough for you too. I hope you've enjoyed um, the time that we've been on the What's Wrong with the World series. And this is... I'm going to attempt to make this the last day in the series. I was going to spend a little more time at the end of chapter 9 and chapter 10. You know, about uh, uh, Noah's son's uh, sin, another another notch in the belt of what's wrong with the world. Um, even God's own people, right? And, um, you know, about the dispersion of the peoples a little bit and something about Canaan and, and how we got here. But really what I want to focus on is the really the crescendo, really the, the, the Achilles heel, the main part, uh, which is, is concluding with Genesis uh, chapter 11, uh, 1 through, really 1 through 9. And so um, I'm going to read that passage and then I'm going to attempt to just finish it up today, however much time that it takes. And um, guys, those of you who, who care about me and, and who watch but never really comment, hint, hint, um, I'd love to hear, you know, I had been really thinking about, and you've heard me babble on a few times about going down a path of, of in the next segment of what's wrong with, uh, what's right and wrong with God's people going through little snippets of the Old Testament, getting to the New Testament so people better understand the Old Testament. The problem now that I'm finding as I'm attempting to do that is I spend about an hour each day in the morning before I get started with my day. Uh, of work uh, in in my devotions, and I try to um, make that devotional time the time that I also just write down a few notes and then bring it back out to you. And so, with a with a being a a, a rumble guy or a YouTube guy with a day job, that makes it difficult to have the extra time to really to really study and and spend more time lasering in and piecing things together. And I may get time to do that. But right now is not one of those, so I may venture off into another book study so or a topic. So if there's something that you are really um, dying to hear something about that you feel a lot of people miss or, uh, you know, a book or a topic that people miss, um, you know, I'm an authentic guy. I try to be real. Um, I'm not trying to be somebody else's preacher. I'm not trying to, you know, um, be on the, um, you know, the... Uh, the X Xer of the day with you know ten million uh, subscribers that would be nice, but if it's for the reason that I see a lot of people do it, battling back and forth over theology and things while the world is watching, saying you guys can't even agree on stuff, that's just really not going to be my kind of guy. That's not going to be who I am, and of course I may not even have the potential to do that anyway. So uh, if God wanted something like that, that would be different. Um, but I would like to hear from you if there's something on your mind. If not, you know, you don't have a lot of time to tell me because I'll be getting into it here pretty shortly. So I guess I need to get started. Um, anyway, I'm not really sure where I'm headed. So let's at least read um, Genesis chapter 11, verses 1 through 9, as we conclude our, our time together in this series. The Word of God says, Now the whole earth had the same language and the same words and it happened as they journeyed east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar and settled there and they said to one another come let's make bricks and burn them thoroughly and they had brick for stone and they had tar for mortar and they said come let us build for ourselves a city a tower whose top will reach into heaven and let us make for ourselves a name lest we be scattered over the face of the earth. And then Yahweh came down to see the city and the tower which the sons of men had built. And Yahweh said, Behold, they are one people. They all have the same language. And this is what they have begun to do. So now nothing which they purpose to do will be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and 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 they're confused their language so that they will not understand one another's language. So Yahweh scattered them from there over the face of the whole earth, and they stopped building the city. Therefore, its name was called Babel, 
because there Yahweh confused the language of the whole earth, and from there Yahweh scattered them over the face of the whole earth. It's really a uh, a powerful um, little segment of scripture right there that we're going to close with today. So let's get right into it. You know, first of all, I think what we see here is that the whole earth, of course, verse 1 says, had the same language and the same words. And one um, one translator, one uh, commentarian um, uses the word unified words. That's really a, something to think about. The whole earth had the same language and they had unified words. And um, I'll just say that if you don't think that's resonant of the times that we're in now, I don't really know what to tell you. The whole objective with the uh, globalism, with the globalistic outlook of the world, uh, the new world order, the great reset, you fill it in with anything that you happen to believe in. I think all of them are um, a part of where we're at is that we're all heading towards a world and a system that has unified words and, if you will, unified beliefs. Um, those unified beliefs have everything to do, for those of us who are on the Christian side of things, I know some of you who watch are not yet there but are, are not on the narrow path, but watch me for whatever reason, and I'm thankful that you do, if you do, because part of the reason that I'm doing this is for you, so that maybe... You can hear someone who might be a knucklehead, but is a very authentic and real knucklehead um, who actually is trying to follow Jesus on the narrow path and and would like to um, sound a little bit different than every other person that you that you hear. Um, hopefully, that's a that's a um, a good thing. But. The real, basically, it's the realization of a unified vision's uh, power, common language, common belief, common vision for their world. And that's, of course, where we're at now. If you look around, um, there is a mad, mad objective for you to um, believe everything that has now been foisted on society, a once Western society with many, many flaws, but that had as a unified vision the belief in uh, Christianity's God in some loose form or fashion. And because of that, there were some universal, I guess, if you will, there was a unified vision, unified vision uh, of a common belief, common, um, you know, um, for the world then. And so now those of us who've come from that um, type of belief are reacting uh, very strongly to the belief that's now being foisted on us which has a lot to do, of course, with this one world government, with this one world system where everybody just um, imagine there's no heaven, there's no religion uh, to, and that we all believe in whatever the, the uh, I've got a shirt that says, um, I believe the current thing. So whatever the current thing that the world is hoisting on us right now, and you can fill in the blank, I really don't need to mention them. Um, you know, the world's gone crazy with these things, and we are being asked to collectively, corporately, um, as a nation and as a world, believe and espouse to these things or else possibly uh, not be able to buy and sell food, hint, hint, not be able to, you know, have a decent job, um, you know, and and people who are going to be uh, canceled in one way or another uh, in their life, not necessarily just speaking of channels and things like that, but being canceled because they're they're making a, a, a certain um, uh, a certain assertion as to what they believe that is contrarian to what is now being pushed upon everybody. This is uh, I hope you see this. This is very clearly what's what's a part of what's going the rise of the of the new world order. The one new world order is going on, um, and it's just kind of uh, a warning to us that what's wrong with the world that this idea of a one world system is actually not a good thing, and God understands it and he's going to give us a little bit of explanation the rest of will be for us to figure out but um this is this is uh genesis chapter 11 is a key passage and it says it happened as they journeyed east they were nomadic people that they found a plane which we many believe was the uh, modern day baghdad which was the beginning really of, of of civilization and settled there 
and that they they then become to kind of uh, settle down into the vision, if you will. They they find a a common ground, a common um, um, a land, a common voice, a common vision, a common power, and they begin to settle down into that as they have been nomadic. Peoples, they want to settle down and have a home and build a home and build some other things that we're going to talk about. And then we we see in verse 3, um, there kind of is a community consensus because they said to one another, come let us make bricks and burn them thoroughly. And they uh, had brick for stone and they had tar for mortar. So they accumulated resources, a pool of resources, a unified resources. And so there is the realization of harnessing their massive resources collectively together to be able to have more power to do more things, Um, much as a a coalition force would gather together to go against a bad guy, suppose a bad guy, and and take over their people. Um, That unified vision and power and accumulation of resources is a very powerful thing that is very hard to, to overcome. And so there's a united front in their agenda, uh, a nation of the same mind, if you will. And, you know, the thing of it is, it sounds, when George Bush Sr. started talking about this new world order years ago, um, you know, it, it sounds really sexy at first. You know, it sounds like, yeah, we'll all be together. Yeah, it's going to be great. Imagine all the people. Yeah, all that stuff. This unified voice of goodness and love and peace except for we forget the fact that what we've just been through 11 chapters and what's wrong with the world, and that is I am and you are, and that is not going to change, and that never changed. And so you're going to have a unified voice of people who are really bad people, who have bad ideas for you, have a bad vision for you, have a bad idea of power for you. And whatever it is that they envision, it envisions that they have more and you have less of it, that's for sure. But just so you know, the Bible is very current. It's very relevant to the days uh, that we live in. And guess what? It always has been. And so they they have the realization of these massive resources. They're starting to accumulate, if you will, uh, some wealth, some resources, if you will. And so they said, the, the group of, of, of leaders got together uh, who pointed themselves leaders and uh, they said, come let us build for ourselves a city and a tower whose top will reach into heaven. And let us make for ourselves a name, lest we be scattered over the face of the earth. And so they wanted to build a city, a tower. Some believe it was a ziggurat temple, some sort of a temple to a, to the gods. Um, certainly not to the god, which, you know... Is no big secret. We knew where this was headed. We didn't. We didn't. We didn't need to see the previews for next uh, for the next um, episode to understand. But what we see here is this building of a utopia and getting their their name and lights. We want to become a people. Let us build for ourselves a city and a tower whose top will reach to heaven. There's no heights that we can't achieve. There's no goals that we can't attain unto. And so. Um, there is indeed the spirit of the world to, if you will, and this is the same temptation from Genesis chapter 3, to deify themselves instead of worshiping the one who made them, to put themselves, as Adam and Eve did, to attempt to the temptation that they succumb to, put themselves in the God spot. And so they're tired of being nomads. They're ready to settle down and get uh, 16 million subscribers. Um, on YouTube and be an influencer. They want to be an influencer in the world. They want to have the right vision. They want to be the, the the choice of everybody goes to for what they can learn who are in the know and that will guide and lead them because people by and large are like a moth to the flame to go after leaders that they've not really spent any time hint, hint, really investigating and learning about. And, you know, it's a temptation to insert some political um, insights in there, too, which I'm going to resist today. Um, American politics, man, is a whole whole different dynamic, but it's made up of all these things that we're talking about. And it's a a tough navigation uh, through all this to come down on the right thing. So I feel you. 
but they're they're in the process of urbanization. And so then it's interesting, as we talk about a lot, then Yahweh came down to see the city and the tower which the sons of men had built. Now, every time Yahweh comes down, Sodom and Gomorrah, he comes down to Egypt. He comes down to Mount Sinai. He's up to something and it's not usually good because there's a problem. Things have gone awry and God recognizes that if he doesn't step in, there's going to be an even bigger, bigger problem. So this is the news that gets God's attention. <clears throat> and it's uh, it's the realization that mankind's ascendancy will be his um, really his descendancy <laughs> instead of ascendancy, his descendancy into ruin of himself and the world and the people around him. Because Yahweh says, behold, they are one people. And they all have the same language. They have the same belief systems. And this is what they have begun to do. They've begun to do. So now nothing that they purpose to do will be impossible for them. They will, in a sense, become their own God, the Great Reset. They'll, they'll, in many senses, they'll become, um, you know, what it is that they set their heart on. They'll, they'll figure it out, and eventually, that's what they'll become. I believe that before this happens again, that God will, will step in. Of course, Rome and the Greeks and many others tried to do it. That didn't work out so well for them either, though. Evidently, God came down and dealt with that as well. In some form or fashion, did he not? So the divine council comes together. Come, let us go down. And they're confused their language so that they will not understand one another's language. Why? Well, they reach a verdict. They want to make them... Um, 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 they don't want to make them a one people. They want to, them to spread out and become their own people with different languages and things so that it will be more difficult for them to come together with this collective vision. You notice some, uh, English is, is like it or not, is the, is the uh, if there was one, a one world language that people gravitate to in order to communicate so that they can have this one world vision. So just give that some thought. And he goes down to make them into their uh, own countries. And so Yahweh scattered them from there over the face of the whole earth, and they stopped building the city, at least uh, at least for now. And so they made them, um, you know, get out of there and scatter again. And so this is how the scattering caused all these uh, new nations to worship other gods, which wasn't a good thing, as God in chapter 12, which we may or may not go into, because we're closing this section now. May get to it later though. So maybe I'll hear from you. We'll get that and then we'll get going. But in chapter 12, he is now he then disassociates himself from, from, if you will, the worldly peoples. He has them in mind, don't get me wrong. But then he, he designates Israel, he will, beginning in chapter 12 with Abraham, as his chosen nation to... Um, to be hopefully his representation in the world, just like the church is to be his representation in the world. How's that going? Just go on X for a little while <coughs> and see all the wannabe theologians and actual theologians and wannabe philosophers and actual philosophers go back and forth and get back to me and let me know how you feel about that. Therefore, its name was called Babel, which means confusion. We could use a little bit of confusion right now, I think, because there Yahweh confused the language of the whole earth. From there, Yahweh scattered them over the face of the whole earth. He repeats that. God seeks a people who will, instead of him always having to find them, where are you? Like he had to do with Adam and Eve. 
and they're going to seek him instead. We've been through 11 chapters. It's been a, you know, not too long of a journey, but a, but a long enough journey that hopefully you understand why I focused on this topic. I, I um, And, you know, we don't need to go back and recap or view, I, uh, review. I, I would invite you to go back and do that. They're 20, 25 minute segments. And hopefully, you know, you'll find them interesting. But more than just interesting that you'll that you'll hear the Spirit of God speak through, you know, a knucklehead, which means you can speak through, if you can speak through me, you can speak through you, you can speak through anybody. And, um, you know, it's really important for us to understand um, the good news that the grace of God is enough to understand what's wrong with the world and that what's wrong with the world now, okay, back then, what was wrong with the world back then, is what's wrong with the world now. There is nothing new under the sun, saith the preacher, which is one area I've been thinking about going in, maybe Ecclesiastes. It's one of my favorite books. Um, but it's important for us to focus and recognize that, that we don't really have to look far. It's just new, it's just new packages. There's nothing new under the sun. Um, everything that's out now that's trendy and sexy and that you can't wait for Amazon to get to your doorstep are things that have been trendy and sexy before, uh, just, you know, different times and different packages. Um, sin is, it doesn't really have any new tricks. It just has, uh, new packages to ship it to you in that makes it look like it's something new that you then dive into and recognizes it's going to soil and ruin your life like everything else that you've tried. And yet some people, I, I, I will have to say, you know, it seems, and of course I've only lived in one era, but it seems that people are getting better and better and more settled down into their stoicism, uh, atheism, agnosticism against the possibility of God uh, having any saying on their life. Seems they're getting more and more settled into that. Um, and they're comfortable with that. They've, they've taken the bitter pill. They have pretty much swallowed it. Uh, it will, it will come to be seen whether or not they, um, they make that to the end, uh, with that same philosophy. Many do, um, many do not. And I pray that if you're one of those people that you won't make it to that, that you'll, you'll recognize that over 2000 years ago, something cataclysmic happened in the world that you really, really, really need to pay attention to. Uh, what's wrong with the world, guys, at the end of the day? Really, this is uh, as much about me as it is you. What's wrong with the world is me. Mark Prince is the problem. But the more Mark Prince aligns himself with the God of the universe, the God of Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ himself, and walks and tries to follow his ways, uh, the more there is more potential for right in the world because there was only one perfect man that walked his name was jesus and we're not him but he has given us a new and living way to follow him into that and i pray that you will do that i pray that you'll reach out to me you'll reach out to somebody and you'll wrestle with these things if i could be a guide in any way let me know um you know ask for my number in the comments um send me an email you can send me an email at um, the narrow path at markneilprince.com and uh, I'd love to respond to you because I really am very very concerned as I look around and see people who first of all don't recognize what's wrong with the world and that it in fact is them um, and, and also who seem to be still enamored with the world and still put all their stock in some new deliverer who's going to save them um, you know outside of God uh, when um the proof is in the pudding that that's not, um, that's not ever going to happen. Anyway, uh, I pray the Lord's blessing on you today. I wish you well. And uh, hopefully here very, very soon I'll be back and I'll be doing something. I'm just not sure. I may, I'm still trying to make this a devotional segment um, because of the time frame that I have. So I'm going to, as usual, try to do something that is devotional, but also a little bit more um to try to make it substantive and something that you can really sink your teeth into but most of all something that causes you to want to follow jesus i hope i've done that anyway good day god bless you be sure to like this video share it with somebody subscribe hit the all button all these come back to you if you're on rumble you simply just hit the follow button and make some comments let me know you're here so that i can hear from you take care god bless